Hey there, Eli coming at you again from OSA Coventry here to showcase a really interesting kind of rare freshwater fish. I know it's been a while since I did a freshwater video, but I feel like these guys are a little too interesting to pass up. So these guys in front of me are croaking gouramis, also known as Trichopsis vitata. These are really interesting anabanted gourami. So these are kind of a relative of a betta fish or a paradise fish. But as their name suggests, these guys are actually capable of producing sounds, which is a really interesting thing about these fish. As with a lot of other fish that produce sounds, a lot of times this is a modification or a use of their swim bladder kind of to make sort of a drumming sound like saltwater drum fish generally use their swim bladder to produce croaking noises. These guys actually have an adaptation with their pelvic fins, which are the fins toward their belly of the fish. And they use these fins to produce a noise, which is sometimes a clicking noise, sometimes a grunting noise, or a croak as the name suggests. These are one of the only fish that have been positively studied to really communicate with this sort of apparatus. So these fish will settle territory squabbles between males just by swimming up next to each other, rubbing these fins together and producing a croaking noise. Oftentimes this is audible from outside of the aquarium so similar to in our saltwater tanks with snapping pistol shrimp or mantis shrimp where you can hear this maybe from the room over this noise is loud enough to hear from outside of the aquarium which is just really interesting so in comparison to a lot of other garamis which will get territorial uh, between each other and usually physically fight these fish oftentimes will settle their territory squabbles just by producing this noise, talking to each other to show each other who's boss, which I think is really interesting. As I mentioned earlier, as an anabanted gourami, these guys are air breathers or can be air breathers. So they have what is called a labyrinth organ, which is a modified organ related to their swim bladder that allows them to come up for breaths of air and actually take oxygen from the atmosphere instead of just breathing through their gills in the water column, which is super cool. So these guys are pretty tolerant of very low oxygen conditions because of that adaptation, similar to what you see with a betta fish. Most of these gouramis in front of me here don't have the brightest coloration yet. A lot of them are on the smaller side. This species gets to be about three inches full grown with males getting really interesting bands with a kind of gradient from like a green to purplish red kind of maroon color to them and some sparkling of blue in between. Another similar cousin, the sparkling garami, is a little more bright and colorful with spangling of blue and green colors along the sides, but another really interesting uh, fish nonetheless. Another really neat thing about these croaking garamis and the genus Trichopsis is that these are bubble nest forming fish. So similar to the way a beta fish will, will form a nest at the top of the tank, by blowing bubbles that kind of clump up and stick to the surface. Oftentimes they'll lay these under leaves or under some sort of cover so it can't be seen from above. But when these fish go into breed, they will basically lay their eggs, deposit them, catch them in their mouths, bring them up to the surface and blow them into these bubble nests to protect them on the underside of these leaves. So really interesting way of parental care with these guys is that they will watch over their eggs in a nest that is actually floating at the surface of the water. On that note, these fish are breedable in aquarium. Generally, they breed when the temperatures are warmer. 80 to about 84 degrees oftentimes will trigger these guys to condition to spawn and just keeping them very well fed and happy up until that period will generally produce you some eggs. These fish can be kept in pairs, can be kept in trios. Oftentimes it's a little more important to keep more females than males, especially if you plan on breeding them down the road. However, considering that these are a little bit less aggressive of a gourami, you can keep males together in an aquarium pretty successfully. Generally, a tank of about 10, 15 gallons for a single pair would be appropriate. And if you plan on keeping a few more in the tank, 20 or 30 gallons might be a little more appropriate for these fish. If you do plan on keeping multiple pairs of these fish or just a small group of them in general, oftentimes you will get to see these displays between the males showing off for each other and producing this, this noise that we talked about earlier, which is just a really interesting thing to know about these fish and to see in your own aquarium at all. In comparison to a lot of the other gouramis that are present in the hobby, these guys are a lot more peaceful, kind of almost similar to a chocolate gourami in their behavior. They're very shy, very timid uh, gouramis. So generally keeping them in a well-planted tank with other very peaceful tank mates, maybe some small danios, 
small tetra species and some bottle dwellers would be the most appropriate for these guys and they definitely uh, appreciate some areas of dimmer lighting so if you have a very heavily planted aquarium oftentimes they will hang to kind of the darker areas of the tank just to kind of try and blend in with their surroundings. As I mentioned before, generally the warmer temperatures of 80 degrees and above are going to help to trigger these guys to spawn in the aquarium. However, they are quite tolerant of a wide range of parameters. They actually can be kept at temperatures as low as about 70 degrees Fahrenheit all the way up to about 84. So they're very tolerant in that respect. And otherwise they generally prefer a little bit softer acidic water maybe in the 6.5 to 7 pH range but can be kept up to about 7.5 pH as well. Average lifespan for these guys would probably be in the two to four year range uh, if they are properly taken care of. So the croaking garami, cool relative of your betta fish and other garamis out there. Much more peaceful alternative to many of the other garamis while you still get that interesting bubble nesting nature of your betta fish with a lot more peaceful, more shoaling appropriate species of fish and these guys are a real treat i'm glad to have uh, come across these in the shop something that you're not going to see very often so if these are something that you've had your heart set on we finally have them in the shop for you to check out as always thank you guys for watching let us know in the comment section below if you have questions or suggestions for future videos keep it fishing